Turn that reverb off. That's better. Well, there's Hey Joe. A bit of a Jimi Hendrix. Right, who's um, who have we got here today? Sheila's tagged me somewhere. Thank you, Sheila. Right, so, hey, Steve. Diatonic dude. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for joining in. Um, Johnny Featham, your jam? It was, yes. At the, the lovely Hague, got up and played some Hey Joe, but you didn't like my guitar. The strings are too heavy for you. Hi, James. Um, actually, Johnny, playing on a telly, the reason actually I've got this at the moment is because I, um, I heard 
it's a rumor, it's a suspicious rumor going around that Hey Joe, the solo from Hey Joe, was played on the Telecaster. I know that if you're a Tele fan, you probably um probably heard that one, but it seems to be that there was some stuff uh, Hendrix did that was played on a Telecaster. So apparently Noel Redding, I think Noel Redding had a Telecaster, and Jimmy used it for um for the solo on Hey Joe and a few other things. Could have been Hey Joe, might have been something else. I don't know. Um, but that's what I heard. So if anyone knows any different, let me know. But I thought as um, as I heard it was, then I would just play Hey Joe. I was trying to sort of go through stuff to play and Hey Joe seemed appropriate. Um, I don't play I don't play with metal rope. You play with lady strings. You play with like sevens, as I understand. Sheila from Disgusted of Chesterfield. Disgusted. Very nice. You mean Disgusted. You're stunned. Yeah, of course you are. Hi, hey, Nick. What gauge do I'm using, Joe? Um, used to use really heavy gauges, but actually I, I've used tens for years now. And there's tens on this, to be honest. Some guitars feel a bit like they've got heavier strings. This one's got fairly tight tension. Hi, David. Um, this has got sort of quite high tension, so it feels more like sort of 10.5s, 11s. <laughs> That's a lot of reverb. Uh, sorry, a lot of gain. That's some. Um, there we go. 18 to 82s. Yeah, that's right. I have my own custom set made um, by a girder factory. That's a girder factory, not a girdle factory. Right. So this is my. Hello, Lawrence. How are you doing? This is my um, 1973 Fender Telecaster. Um, I've got, got a few old Telecasters, and, but I did, up until fairly recently, have two, of, two 1973 Telecasters. One was a red one, and one was a yellow one, and obviously I still have this one. Um, the other one I bought from um, Peter J. years and years ago, um, back when I was at university. Um, but I sold it back to him a little while ago because he wanted it back, I don't blame him. Um, so um, I, I got rid of that one and kept this one. This one um, I bought, a, whoa, oh, that would have been in the, again in probably the late 90s, um, 97, 98, I suppose I bought this, possibly earlier than that, um, from a guy who was selling two vintage Fenders. He was selling um, a Fender Telecaster, this one, and he was selling a Sunburst 1974 Stratocaster, which I still have and is upstairs and will be in one of these um, sessions at some point in the future. It's in it before. It's a lovely 1974 hardtail Stratocaster with a maple neck. Um, so, yeah, that's um, I bought it as a pair. Um, got a discount for two vintage guitars in one go. But anyway, we'll start off with this. This particular one. Now, um, what do I need to say about this one? I use this particular guitar. Funny enough, this was the one I used for most of the um, the Better Side album. Um, so most of the songs in Better, on Better Side are played on this particular guitar and the brown strap that you see behind you. Um, so basically, the um, uh, yeah, because main reason for that is actually that um, Ollie Brown was recording his um uh his album uh which one was that here i am he was recording here i am and borrowed a couple of my telecasters so um he used i think my 63 and my jv at the time was sort of indisposed so my jv telly was uh, not around so this was my the main telly through most of those um recordings um although at that time it had a different neck on it um so Let's read some of these. What's going on, Joe? Thank you. Does sound nice and fat. Not the fattest telly I've played because of the maple neck. I always think maple neck sounded a bit brighter, but it is definitely, it's got a different um, bridge pickup in it. But I'll come on to that. Nick wants the chords for Sweet Child. Do you mean, do you mean Sweet Child of Mine? The chords are quite easy to Sweet Child of Mine. Then. D, C, N, 9, and G. I think the rest of it goes. A, C, D. See the licks and the hollybodies. Rocks, 
full size. So you want to see the, the licks and the hollow bodies. Uh, I've got a few hollow bodies. I will be coming on to those. Anyway, tomorrow is going to be a bass guitar, so it's going to be upset most of you. All right, so where was I? Just tune this up. So one thing about this is because it's been sat in the um, sat in the loft for a while, it has a tendency to go out of tune and takes a while to get in tune. Um, so where were we? Yeah, so I use this for most of the Better Side album and some of the Guitar Legends album as well. Um, and so I use this on things like um, Baby Blue and Little White Lies and um, Piece of Me, I think this is used for. Um, I found that in the loft. Yes, I have a loft full of guitars and I, I can't always remember where they are. So um, I've got quite a lot. So yeah, they're stored up in there. So I tend to, um, I yeah, I've got, tw oh, thank you, Paul. Yes, I try and achieve twang when and where possible. Um, so I have a few favorites down here, but up in my loft is a lot of my old guitars. I have, yes, Nick, I have more in my loft. I have um, over, I actually, well, obviously I've got 42, but I've got more than 42. It's just that there are 42 interesting guitars that are worthy enough of talking about them on the, um, on the internet rather than just talking about the random bits and pieces I've got there. You, you know, I don't think anyone's going to want to hear me play a, um, a broken half size nylon strung guitar uh, and things like that. Um, but yeah, uh, that's basically, um, that's the deal with my loft. It's full of stuff, uh, mostly guitars and amps and pedals. I might do a pedal at some point, do loads of different um, pedals and stuff. Right, so what we got next, Ba, ba, da, ba, ba. So yeah, what I was saying was actually at the time I had a different knack on it because I was um, really into um, guitars called Robin Ford at the time. Um, and so I bought this guitar because it was like the closest I could sort of find as a vintage guitar that was like Robin Ford's guitar, but I didn't, it didn't have a rosewood neck and I wanted a rosewood neck. Plus this actually had like the frets were really, really low. So I had to get the Fret sorted out or buy another neck and at the time I thought no I don't really want to mess with a vintage neck um, and so I changed the neck for another one so I had a, there was a, quite a long time where I used this guitar but it had a um, it had a, a rosewood neck and actually interesting enough the rosewood neck that was on it was from was from this guitar and this guitar here is actually the guitar that Ollie, when Ollie Brown got into Telecasters, this was the guitar I lent him for a long time, and he used this um, for like an American tour and some stuff on the um, on the album, I believe. Um, and so basically, this was the, the the Telecaster. But what happened was this particular neck was on that um, seventy three Tele for a long time, and I used that for a long time with just this. It, this is a brand only neck. And I think the body is off, um, I don't even remember where, it's an actual Fender body, but don't know where it came from. I ordered it off, of, uh, I bought it secondhand off eBay. So that was the one Ollie used for quite a while until he got his um, his white tape. But I'll talk about this one another time. That's where the neck came from. So I had, um, I had that one on there for quite a long time. I'm just gonna go and read some of these. So I can answer some questions. Andy is all about the bass. I assume you were a big Megan Trainer fan. I'd go out of tune if I if I stay in the loft. I do stay in the loft most of the time. I am quite out of tune, to be fair. Um, Johnny, question there. You have a lot of what we call named guitars, but have you ever gigged with a guitar that you just found and liked and didn't really have any real quality behind it? Yes. Yes, that's a question. Um, actually, I'll be doing this one soon. There, there was one guitar that I, I, I actually won it in a competition. Um, I did it. It was at the Birmingham Guitar Show a few years back, maybe a couple of years ago. And it was a run. Uh, I, and I won this guitar after having a duel with the devil. It wasn't actually the devil, as I understand. But it was a run, what, something I would never buy, ever. I would have never bought it. If it had been in a shop, but I was just, I won it in a competition and it was a, a Sterling, a music band sub, um, like a, uh, like a bit like an Axis, but like a cheap version, like 300 quid version. But actually it's like really, the guitar itself is really, really nice. It's really, really good. 
Um, so I really like that particular guitar, but it, that's not, it's not an expensive guitar. It was, it was free to me, but it, not an expensive guitar. No, completely stock, just sounds really good. But I'll talk about that in another session too. Right. Uh, you can't beat a good telly, Steve. Absolutely not. Right. Then show us that set. I, I don't have a set. To, uh, you mean the Brian Setzer one? I don't know. Or do you mean the playing? I don't actually have a Brian Setzer Gretsch. If you've seen me play one, that's because I borrowed it off a friend of mine. Um, oh, hello, Tom. How you doing? Hi, Finn. Good evening to you. Hi, right, Justin. I think I've got the songs in the second hour. I do remember. I remember what I remember what guitar. I reckon if my memory serves me correct, Justin, it would be uh the JV Telecaster that's some um, this this one here that's behind me. It's the the 52 that I'm pointing at now. The 52 reissue is a Japanese um Japanese uh squire for all intents and purposes. Right. Um, diatonic dude. So is it 7.25 rays? Yes, it. I well, I believe so. Um, yeah, it's got to be really, as it's a 73. Um, so yeah, it'd be 7.25 radius, and I, it's fine to be honest. Seven, I, I'm not um, too worried. Um, I'm not too worried uh, about radius, but it doesn't really worry too much because I have the action relatively high. So a radius doesn't, you know, whether it's nine. nine. Actually, uh, to be honest, the, the worst time I have with radius is when they get to like 12. Um, and like a 12 inch radius, which I actually find too flat. I don't like really flat. Um, so I don't, I don't mind. These are fine. This is fine. Nine is, is pretty good for me. Yeah. This is okay. But actually, the one thing about this is that is it's got a thin neck. It's actually quite a thin neck, which actually bothers me more than the radius. I like the... Uh, I'd have a relatively sort of wide neck. And I, I don't mean thin as in sort of the profile. It's sort of thin that way round. So it's as narrow, should I say. So it's a narrow neck. So it's not the I don't, it's not my favorite neck to play on. Um, so I find it a little bit fiddly. Um, but it's uh, it's still quite nice. It's uh, one of the reasons why I swapped it for the um for the rosewood neck. Uh, you know, it's um it's one of those things. It's um yeah, it's I prefer a rosewood neck for some reason on most things, but on this particular one, I, that's why I changed it. You know, the frets and so on were not really sort of doing it for me. Um, but it's a really, actually, really nice neck. It's um, if I bring it, you can see it's actually bird's eye maple, or very, very f figured. Even if it's not bird's eye maple, it's very, um, very figured. There you go. How is that? Trying to get that wood, so you can see it there. So there it is. So it's quite a nice, quite a nice piece of wood on the back, to be honest. That looks pretty cool. Quite flamed. Um, so looking at the rest of it, I mean, it's 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 in, I know, not great nick for you know, it's sort of about a six out of ten for a, for condition. It's very worn away. Some of the paint coming, you know, they sort of the. I don't know what the original colour of this is. It probably was sort of like you know, not quite as banana yellow as this. Quite a lot of nicks on the back. Um, what's that? Steve has clapped to celebrate the election. <laughs> well, no, I don't know it at all. I hate to say. Now, Jack, Rory Gallagher, Robin Ford. No, I bought it because because of Robin Ford. I can I can lie about it. I think it looks more like Rory Gallagher because Rory Gallagher has got like a maple neck telly. I believe that he does slide on. Johnny, if I had to play one style of my uh, guitar for the rest of my life, what would it be? It, well, I don't know. It would be a telly or a strat, and I, I suppose really a telly. Uh, if that's that's just how I feel at the moment, that changes. I've been playing a strat quite a lot recently. But I could probably, uh, what I would say is I can do everything on a telecaster, but I can't do everything on a strat. You know, I, you can't get that sort of, you know, nice rock sound on a strat very easily. <laughs> 
You can get it quite easily on the telly, but then obviously with a few mucking about with the tone. You can get quite a respectable clean sound. So um, I think a telecaster really covers it all. If, if you need, more likely the question is, if I had to take one guitar to a gig, because it's you know, a big choice playing one for the rest, but if I had to take one telly to a gig, it, uh, one guitar to a gig, it would always be a telecaster. And it would generally be th this JV telly, because it seems to be able to do pretty much everything. Um, so yeah, that's, um, that's my answer to that question. Right, well, so what else have we got going on? Right, so basically this was um, when I put the original neck back on again a while back. Um, again, couldn't really play it because the frets had worn down. So I got my good friend Ollie Neal to refret it for me. He did a fantastic job refretting it. Um, so it refretted with, with very, well, they're not, I don't quite remember what he did. I think they're, they're big frets. They're not massive, not the biggest frets ever, but they're big enough for me and they're tall enough for me. Um, so it means I can actually play the thing rather than just have it sort of stuck around, sort of did not doing a great deal. So it's nice to have bigger frets on it. It's, uh, that's not original. Obviously, it sort of takes some value off the fact that it's a vintage telly with different frets. I think what we might have done is put the same width fret on, but with more height. So if, it, you know, if anyone ever gets fussy about it, if they want to buy it in the future, I can always take it down to the, um, the right height vintage telly. As I remember, I can't. Um, my memory's not. Good. Nick, I have a strap. Some real 54 pickups in the bridge, but it sounds like a thing. Yeah, no, I do agree. You can get it. There, are, there are some, some straps. I mean, to be honest, um, that one, the strap behind me, the um, the sunburst sort of relic sort of looks not a real old one, but it's um, I've got a bare knuckle. Uh, I've got the middle pickup from a bare knuckle trilogy set in the back. And again, that sounds huge. You know, it sounds that sounds like a caster. Sounds a very sort of nice fat sound. So you can get a strap to sound big like that. But there's just there is just something about how a telly plays that makes it different. Um Hello Keith. I'm all good, thank you very much. Uh what telly saddles does it have and what are your favorites? Right, this particular one has steel saddles now these aren't the 60s style saddles these are like the um, the 70s ones which are basically steel with two grooves in them the 60s ones were made um from screws and you just sort of like laid the strings over the uh, the grooves in the screws um uh, but these are steel ones my preference for saddles is actually brass um large brass saddles and not necessarily the compensated ones that i've got in the 63 um the best saddles i mean my my preference in saddles is the um is the jv which is this one and those are the saddles i've got on that one so they're just basically vintage style um 50 style sort of brass barrel saddles they're my favorites i think they sound the best they're definitely the best um the best option for a telly they're the biggest set i I think um, pile drivers are my favourite. Tele well, actually, pile drivers are the pickups I have in the um, in the 60, 63. That guitar there, that's got pile drivers in, um, and the um, the JV has got um, it's got flat fifties, but they've been, if you like, almost wound to pile driver spec, so they're particularly massive sound. So I agree with that. They're really nice. What else we got? So yeah, Ollie, we fretted it. Um, yeah, well, actually, tell you what, though, I'll just mention about the seventies. If you know anything about Telecasters and them, um, seventies versus sixties, and then reissues, is that you can always tell the seventies Telecaster from this what they call the notch, which is essentially. I'm just going to talk about this. I know it's very boring for anyone who isn't into guitars, but Mind you, you probably wouldn't be watching this if you weren't into guitar, so I'm going to talk about it anyway. So I'm going to describe the difference. And it's always been something that it always I always see, and it bothers me when I look at a 70s Telecaster. Now, it's this bit. On a Telecaster, on a 70s Telecaster, if you look at it, this curve here isn't 
right in terms of the shape of a Telecaster because this bit curves down and then you see the, sh the, the edge here goes straight down into this bit. So there's no notch in here, if you like. So there's an absence of this little gap. I'll try and I'll try and show you what I mean. If if you don't have a don't happen to be lucky and have a Telecaster to hand to compare the two, so I'm going to show you this. So if you can see, uh, I'm getting this right. I'll see if I can get this so you can see both at the same time. Um, Right, let's try that. So let's look at that one. Um, yeah, you can probably see that from there and that from there. Now you can see that at that point on this one, there's a little shoulder here on the neck block. And on a 70s one, you don't get that neck, that little bit just there, doesn't isn't there. So if you look, the, the, the curve itself is a slightly different shape on a 70s telly than it is on a 60s telly. I hope you can see that. I'm just trying to get that sort of any closer so you can see that. But it's easy to tell if you just look at this, if you look at this bit here and this bit here and see that that shape. And it does bug me when I look at these guitars and I, I see the shape I expect to see in the telly. And it feels like this one, this one <laughs> isn't the right shape. Um, so yeah, I probably, I don't know how many people notice that, but definitely that um, that little notch is a is a bone of contention for me. So I like the seventy threes, I like the seventy tens, but they um, there's just something not quite right about the routing on them. You're going to need pictures. I'll I'll take some pictures, Jack. Right. Um. So come on, what else? Seventy three. Yes. Yes. Right. So what we're going to look at. So I'll just talk about the pickups I've got in it to start off with. So looking at that, what this is is a um, I have got the original. The original pickups, um, but basically, I think why is it why is it gone dark? I don't know why I've gone. There we go. Right. So basically, I've got the original front pickup here. But the back pickup is actually a bare knuckle flat 50s, um, a flat 50, which is about 10K, because I like it just slightly fatter sounding than a normal one. The original pickup um, just sounds a bit toppy, so I took it out. It sounds quite nice, but it's a bit uh, imbalanced. I always like the back pickup to be able to sort of um, get some rocky sounds out of it, you know, because the, um, the bare knuckles very good at that sort of sound. <laughs> So you can sort of get that sound, but you can still get the old, um, the nice Telecaster twang. <laughs> Oh, it's eight o'clock. I'm not going to my front door because it's too far away, but I'm going to clap for the NHS while I'm here. So if we could all just do a, a quick clap. I think I just heard a room. I just heard a firework. Yep, there you go. Very good. I know I'd be very much appreciated if I was in hospital now. Right, so yes, Peter. Yeah, it's a it's a weird thing, that notch. No one ever ever sort of until you sort of have it pointed out to you, you don't see it. But I see it all the time now. I always look at it and think, what the, why is it there? Um, so, yeah, what's the next bit? Yeah, so so it's basically flat 50 pickup in the back. Original pickup here. The internals are all original. Um, it's not a refin. It's not a re-sprayed neck. Everything's all there. The tuners are, um, are all there. So it's all pretty good. Um, right. I... 
basically um, trying to say each time that I would give you a little lick to have a go at if you play guitar. So I'm going to do a double stop with, as it's a Telecaster, we'll do a bit country style um, to do a... Um, because it's like a Telecaster, we're going to have a little double stop riff. So what I'm going to do is if you look in at my, on my Facebook page, I've done a folder of pictures and it has um, the double stop riff in there. There's only a couple of picks at the moment. Um, one in sweet picking. That one from last, um, from yesterday, in fact. But I've added a picture in there. I'll put it up on the um, on the end of this um, video anyway. And it's going to be a little, um, where is it? I'll just check. I'm going to get it right. Here it is. That's not it. Where is it gone? There it is. Double stop lick. So I'll show you this little lick before I then place players out with them. I think I might play out something off the better side album. So the double stop lick is in A, A major, and it's going to go up. Um, it's going to go up, uh, should we say? Not chromatically, but it's going to go up uh, in a few notes at a time in in thirds. So we're going to do this. In A, these are the notes we're going to use. Okay, there's the notes we're going to use. Um, and it's going to be, there's one double stop. And then we're going to pull, uh, hammer on, pull off. That's it, pull off. Onto the open E. So... So you're going second fret. Actually, what I'll do is just say this. There's two positions. There is fir uh, first finger and second finger on, on uh, alternate fret. So you're on the fifth and the sixth fret on the G. And then you put second finger and third finger on the seventh. Same fingers on the eighth and the ninth. So there's the first little bit. Four different bits. But you're going to pick the E. And pull off onto the um, yeah, pull off onto the E string. That's all you do to start off with. So it's just those notes. But you do a double stop, pull off onto the E, and then you can do the same thing in D. So you're going to go from the ninth, um, the eleventh, and tenth. And then go to the 12th on both, 13th on both, the G and the E, and then on to the um, 14th fret. And then you're going to go up again, so to the 16th and the 15th, fifth, uh, the 17th and 16th, and then the 18th and 17th. We'll stop there. So the whole thing is just going to be the same sort of thing. You're going to pull off onto the E. So that's the one. So I quite like that. I use a lot of those things. It's really handy that you can use this on most of them. So, so it works quite well, but that's like the, like an example place you can use it on. So I'll play that one more time. And that's written down so you can work one out. So nice and easy. Right, so um hopefully you've enjoyed that. If you've got any more questions, I've put them in quick so I'm about to finish with the song. Let's say uh, see if anyone's said anything. Thank you. I try my best. Thank you, Russ. I'll let you uh, what did you say? Right, Brian, that sounds great. Thank you very much. That's great. Fat 50s, yeah. Tim Mills is is indeed the master of pickups. I think I probably would say the more than 80% of my guitars have um, bare knuckles in them of one description or another. So this has actually got a good, a good little showcase of the, uh, the flat 50 bridge because it's really nice and fat.
take a little bit of the top off on the um <laughs> So it really doesn't sound nice, picky, and sort of trebly. It sounds. a slightly sort of uh, slightly dull for a telly pickup but the middle position is nice and bright let's take the overdrive off oh hello Sean. she's finished teaching nice one so diatom do you can nick the woodley lick off me that's fine you help yourself um, who's my favourite telly player? <laughs> so it, it changes daily. At the moment, I mean, to be honest, my favourite telly player for ages has been Greg Cork. Um, I think he's a fantastic telly player. I mean, he's playing different guitars as well, though. So he's playing different stuff. Telly recording. Jim Campolonga actually does some, you know, in, in sort of typically Telecaster stuff. But, um, what was it called? I think it's called Monkey in a Movie or some weird name. Um, by Jim Campolongo. Love that. So if you want a sort of like typical Telecaster tone, I would use um, use Spotify or iTunes or whatever you like. No, in fact, just buy the CDs. Spotify is not very generous to people like me. So um, do that. Uh, right, I'm going to play out with a um, play out with a tune that actually this this guitar was used to play in the studio. Um, so this, this is a track off um, the Better Side. Better Side album. And it's some, um, excuse me. This is a, um, a track that I wrote a long time ago, actually. Um, and it's, uh, let me find where I am. Let's play this to a backing track that we I made from the studio where I recorded it. Um, recorded that at uh, Lee Jacob, oh, Tides Reach Studio, Lee Jacobs Studio, a few years back. So yeah, like I say, played this guitar on that recording, so it should sound fairly familiar. So if you've enjoyed um, hearing all about my 73 Telly and my other things, my Brown Strat. My um my first guitar, the K and the 63. I'll be doing more of these little chats and playing various bits and pieces. Um so I think planned to do a bass guitar um tomorrow. So I'm gonna pick a bass guitar from the collection. Um don't let that put you off. And <laughs> if you're not handy, I'll be playing um I'll be playing some bass bits and pieces. But back to guitars. Um, I think I've d decided that my ratio of guitars to basses means that I would have to do a bass, uh, like a bass session every other, like I do four guitars, then a bass, four guitars, then a bass. So, um, yeah, they'll um, they'll happen. Um, Lee, yes, I'm pretty sure it was a guitar. I don't, yeah, the action wasn't quite, actually, Lee, is it well remembered. It wasn't, I don't know if it was the action so much, it was the fact that that was using the dodgy frets. So I had to do the album with, this guitar went before it was refretted because uh, my JD was on loan. So thanks guys for tuning in. I'm going to finish off with um, with Little White Lies from Better Side.
bit, little bit of reverb on my vocal. <laughs> Hello. Woo. Right, and I'll be off and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. I will be back tomorrow, I hope, unless something drastic ha happens. Um, please donate if you feel like it at paypal.me forward slash Ron Sayer Jr. Or you can buy a CD from www.sayonjoyce.co.uk. Or you can go to iTunes Amazon, or all good download stores to buy our numerous albums. Hiya, David, you've caught me. Nice one. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Terrifying, yeah, I like to be scary as I, as I possibly can. So it's four string sessions tomorrow. I will see you all then. Hi, John. Hi, John. Bye, John. See you next time. Everybody take care.